Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Thursday's Throwback. And today I wanted to talk a bit about the three rules of compensation. And what we'll be doing is not only just reviewing those rules, but we'll also talk about, uh, show you some data with those rules using uh, FCS Express. So first off, the three rules, the first rule of compensation is that the controls must be at least as bright or brighter than the sample that compensation will be applied to. And what I'm showing here in this figure is two different, uh, 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 the negative, a dim, and a bright uh, in the primary and the secondary channel. And you can see I've also put the error bars in this case. And you can see when we look at the uh, negative to dim, we see a certain amount of compensation, about 23.58%. But we go to the bright, we see that the compensation value is about 24.5%. Um, That's about a 1% difference. But you'll notice that we have a tighter um, resolution over here because we've got a, our, our CVs, we've got a tighter um, spread of the data here that gives us a better measurement. And it's important, and you'll see this in, um, when we look at the data, why we would want to use this and why this is important. So second, implicit in that rule is that the signal must be on scale. So there's going to be a scale that we have that our detectors measure. And you can see here, these, uh, these events are off scale, so we can't use them. It has to be within the linear range of our, our PMT. If we're outside of that linear dynamic range, compensation is no longer valid. So you can see here, I've marked the linear range. So we would want our compensation values within this range, but bounded by the red lines. Uh, you can get this information in a wide variety of ways. Uh, if you've got a BD instrument, CSMT will give this for, to you. You can calculate this using um, other beads as well to figure out what that dynamic range is, linear range. Uh, eight peak beads, for example, is a great way to, to do that. Um, the second rule is the fluorescent background needs to be the same for the positive and negative controls. And here we see our positive beads in green our unstained cells in red and our pause unstained beads in blue. And you can see that these two have very different autofluorescence, background fluorescence. So we need to make sure that whatever the fluorescence of this, which was on beads and the background fluorescence of our, own, our negative control are the same. Otherwise we're going to improperly compensate. We can slightly over or under compensate. So make sure that you avoid things like the universal negative um, and ensure that you are properly um, picking the right positive negative. I always recommend that you have a positive or negative in each uh, compensation sample and use that for your compensation. Um, it's important, I like to say, that if uh, target's not abundant, it's really useful to use antibody capture beads. You can actually use a combination of uh, beads and cells depending on uh, how you're doing your matrix, and we'll show you that in a future webinar, uh, f a future uh, uh, Ask X site. So you'll be able to see that. But you can see here our single stain and our antibody capture beads. And we'll take a look at this in a little bit more detail. And of course, the third important rule is that compensation controls must exactly match the experimental uh, fluorochrome in the detector. And we're just showing here GFP, um, Brilliant Blue 515, and FITZ. And you can see each, three, each of these, which will all be measured in the same detector, uh, the FITZ detector typically, of, you know, say a 530-30 bandpass filter off the 48 laser. But they have very different uh, spectral curves. The use of uh, spectral viewers is really good for this to figure that out. So we're going to move from our slideshow here. And let me bring up our FCS window. Here's our FCS window now. And what we've got here is I've got some unstained beads, unstained cells, and a multi-stained uh, sample. So I'm going to start just by bringing my beads over here. We're going to gate on our single stained beads. It's really important to gate on the single stain, uh, the, the single beads. We don't want these doublets. We don't want things off scale. This junk down here. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle around this bead population here. These are my beads. Now I'm gonna bring this over here. And this is gonna be, I'm just gonna make sure I have my single cells showing here. One thing I like to do with this is I like to magnify the resolution so I can go right in and really look at just to make sure I'm going to get exactly what I want. Um, you can see here the beads are very nice. We're only getting stuff that's on this diagonal. And 
And you can see we're avoiding that debris there. So I'm gonna bring this over here to my third. It's important at this point, actually, to go back and unmagnify. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to, uh, where is it, I'm sorry. Um, format, I apologize. We're gonna change your plot type and we're gonna change our plot type to a histogram. And here we're now gonna put this on the Fitzy, uh, the fluorescein detector. So you can see very nice. So we have a nice negative population, a nice positive population. If we take a look at our cells. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with our cells looking at the population. Now it's really important when you're gating uh, using cells that we get a tight population uh, around an auto, you know, the, a similar autofluorescence. So you'll see here, I'm just taking the center of this peak, um, what we consider, you know, a lot of people consider them lymphocytes. And again, we'll bring this up and we're gonna take a look at, make sure we've got singles. Oops. Clicking too fast. Again, I'm gonna use that trick. I'm gonna magnify the resolution because you can see there's a lot of stuff right here that we wanna get rid of, we don't wanna use. The tighter we are, the better. So here's our second cells. Now we're gonna bring this over. We'll do the same thing. We'll change the format to a histogram. We'll set this, we'll unmagnify this and we'll set this to Fitzy fluorescein. Now you can see if I line these up more precisely that we have slightly different values here. What we can actually do is, I'm gonna bring this back over here, show you this um, a little more detail. We're gonna get on this, this is our beads. Put this to our Fitzy. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an overlay. And I'm gonna take the data list here we're gonna overlay this with our fluorescein and we're gonna use our cells. So here you can see our beads are definitely brighter than our single stain cells. So we are gonna uh, follow the first rule of compensation that we have a signal that's at least as bright as it's gonna be on our experimental samples. And if you wanna check that out, here's my multi-stain sample. This has not been compensated, but we'll just uh, turn this into a histogram as well. We'll look at the fluorescein signal, the Fitzy signal, and we'll put this on our cell gate two there. And you can see with our cells that this is about 10 to the fourth. And if we were to overlay our single stained beads on this, You'll see again, we have a, a we're brighter than our, our control. So we've met that first criteria. We've made, when we were going to set compensation, we would be using this positive and negative. You'll notice there's a positive and negative in both of my controls so that it's, I can gate on both of these. The reason beads are also nice is it's very easy to gate here on the positive uh, with the beads because we have very good separation. Whereas with the cells, where do we actually draw our gate? So that uh, helps with our second rule and our third rule. And of course, we've collected everything at the same voltage on our instruments, and this is the same fluorochrome, so we're okay. The biggest issue we would worry about with the fluorochromes would be, especially if we're using tandem dyes. The other thing to think about when you're using fluorochromes when you're compensating is that they need to be treated the same way. So if you're doing an intracellular staining, for example, you're doing a fixation permeabilization, your beads or your, your compensation controls have to be treated the same way. You can't uh, do fresh for your compensation controls and fix for your samples. So you really want to make sure that you're doing both of them correctly uh, and everything is, is working the same way. So that's it. Please let me know if you like this format in the, uh, in the box below and we'll be talking to you next week. Have a great day, everybody.